Welcome to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, where world-changing spiritual entrepreneurs come to deeply awaken the power within to bring forth their greatest purpose, to create massive awakened impact for millions of souls around the planet, while enjoying being in tune with all life and real wealth in all aspects of their lives. I'm your host, Daniel John Hanneman. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. We're having fun here. I'm here with Kelly. <laughs> and she cracked it up because we did a countdown. I said, three, two, one. We're getting <laughs> around. <laughs> I was the first time. There have been a number of firsts today, Kelly. I've never <laughs> done that to a guest before. <laughs> and that was so hilarious. I was, speak uh, to us as our, our of the show. Just uh, throw it out there. We're having some fun here. Tech, tech issues and all kinds of weird stuff today, but <laughs> yay, Mercury retrograde. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're going to talk about that sort of stuff because we're here to talk about uh, the, the energies and uh, being an empath and learning to receive. You know, yeah. and Kelly is, um, you know, really done expanded so much um, all these years over the, all these years, and man, you're just growing exponentially. It seems like right now with your business and everything, and I know part of it is mastering, you know, your energy as an empath. So I definitely want to dive into that with you today. And so Kelly's a, a very uh, dear friend of mine. So let me tell you about Kelly. Uh, Kelly Sparta is a transformational shaman who helps people from challenge, challenged childhoods uh, step into the fullest expression of their authentic selves so they can become who they are meant to be. She does this by taking an integrated approach to healing, working on the mental, emotional, energetical, and archetypal levels to achieve healing in record time. I'm still laughing from what just happened, by the way, Kelly, so I'm half trying not to laugh. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll just have to. Uses her skills as a psychic medium, channel, energy healer, and empath to help people out of anxiety, worry, and dread, self-doubt, perfectionism, fear, the plague them into a state of peace and comfort in their own skin. So glad to have you here. I'm glad that we're, I'm not like running a show on NBC or something. I can be, I can be more fun than just in the moment here. There you go. <laughs> right. All right. So Kelly, yeah, I don't have, uh, you know, the, the billionaire uh, uh, co companies I have to satisfy or anything. That's it. <laughs> right after the next break. <laughs> okay. So Kelly, let's dive in. I mean, again, we've known each other for years and, um, it might be a good idea to, because every single person that I work with is an empath. They're all empathic. Um, Me too. But definitely the people, yeah, the people are listening are definitely going to be empathic. And not all of them maybe um, feel or understand or know that they're empaths. So let's even start just there, real basic. Like everybody says, hey, oh, you're, you're probably an empath and all that. So <laughs> let's talk about, from your perspective, what is an empath? Well, an empath, it, it, the short answer is if other people's emotions overwhelm you and you, you're not really sure where you end and other people begin and you find yourself being a chameleon and, and you know, like you're a different person with different people because, you know, their, their energy is impacting you, then you're, you're an empath, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's one of those things that you, you really get when, when you're in it. So you know, I, I remember being, oh God, I remember being in uh, high school and, and college and, you know, I was skinny and pretty and all these guys were like all over me and they were just like, woo. And I was like, and I had no idea if I liked them or not until I left their presence <laughs> because they were so interested in me that I was just like, oh, okay. And then I would leave and I'd be like, why am I spending time with this person? <laughs> I have no interest in them. But I, I wouldn't know that when I was with them because their desire was so strong that it became mine. And, yeah. and so, you know, it's, it, it, for empaths, the, the hardest thing is really figuring out what's yours and what isn't yours, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the problem. Yeah, so, I mean, you mentioned one challenge that you've had in being an empath. Um, what are some of the, the the challenges that you've had on your own journey? Because, like, again, you're you're doing really well in your business these days. You're do, you know you've really expanded, um, and you've gone through a lot of stuff through your life. 
Uh, so tell us some of the challenge, other challenges you've had as an empath and what have you learned to work through that? Because yeah, I mean, for me, I could be a total chameleon. I can be like this really namaste guy at times if that feels right or the situation's right or, you know, mostly I'm more towards that end. And then there's other times I can be like, game on, I'll kick your butt. And I, I mean, <laughs> could be that way to some degree, but I could be a vicious guy. I mean, why do you think my last name is of Sparta? Me anyway, right? <laughs> that, that warrior's in there, you know? And nobody gets it until they see it, right? So, um, but yeah, I mean, these different sides of ourselves, and I know for myself, trying to move through it, um, I, it's, you know, part of it for me too is just really feeling like it's okay for me to be powerful and to take charge and be the natural leader that I am. A lot of times, I, you know, oh, well, who do I think I am to take charge? Maybe I want to be sensitive to your feelings. If you want to, you know, lead the way, even though you're doing, <laughs> I, I, you know, you're going to uh, relate to this, Kelly. You're screwing it all up, but I don't want to <laughs> change, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so maybe we could talk about that too. But yeah, tell us about your, I could give going uh, lots of stuff I've done. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about you now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can see we've sparked the conversation. Yes. So, um, yeah, so for me, I think, um, yes, I, I, I resonate with all of those things. Uh, right. uh, that, that has been true for me at some time in the past or now. Um, and, um, and uh, you know, for me, though, I was, I never had the, oh, no, let me not get in your way piece. <laughs> not that one. Because <laughs> I was a, oh, you're screwing that up. Let me get get out of the way. I'll fix it, you know? <laughs> but that was, that was who I was. So yeah, yeah. I was very clear that I knew. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, there's a reason I took the last name Sparta when I got divorced in 1998. It was like, you know, I didn't want to go back to being the naive girl I had been and I didn't want to keep his name. So I took the pen name that was the hoo -hoo warrior girl, you know, it was that was my thing. And, um, and, you know, I'm still a warrior. I'm just not as I don't I, I'm sort of the grizzled old warrior instead of the young buck warrior. I'm not going looking for a fight these days, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to be the one who says, you know, they come up and go, hey, fight me. And I'll be like, eh, let's have a beer. And I'm like, don't you really want a beer? Because, you know, a beer would be so much better and so much less work. And let's just have a beer. And, and you know, if they insist, I'm like, okay, thunk. now will you have a beer? <laughs> right. That, that's sort of where I am these days. So, um, but the, uh, the, the thing that I found most challenging about being an empath, aside from the not really knowing what I wanted, you know, I'm, I was really clear what everybody else wanted, but I didn't know what I wanted and not really feeling like I had a right to want anything for myself, that I had to, anything I wanted for myself had to be in service to others. And I just, I just had a conversation with somebody about this yesterday who's trying to get her business off the ground and and she's, she's, uh, I was like, so what exactly do you want to be? Who do you want to be? Who, who, who are you meant to be in the world? And she's like, well, you know, blah, 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 all over the place. And then, and to help others. And I'm like, okay, no, 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 back up. <laughs> like, who do you want to be? <laughs> right? Because you need to be clearly you, if you want to magnetize the right people to you. Right. So you got to stop doing it like for others yes you will be in service to others we know this we have few charts and we're going to do this but who do you want to be right mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you want to be for you you know what is what is the fullest expression of your authentic self right and and that's the biggest problem when you're an empath is that you're like oh oh what what i i get to i get to choose right i get to, oh i didn't mm. i mean i was on walkabout in 2002 i'm like on my own walkabout and the whole time if you <laughs> I published my journal and I, originally on live journal, I've moved it to my blog now, but I was publishing all of my experiences and the whole time it's like, oh, I'm opening a pilgrim's path for the world and I'm blazing this trail. And I couldn't just do it for me. Right. Uh, and so that was one of the biggest challenges for me. And then that also translated into, I, I my biggest challenges were with romantic relationships because I had a very hard time saying no to anyone because 
if I said no, not only did I feel bad about saying no, but I also had to feel their pain about being rejected. And that sucked. Right? I was just like, oh, I don't want to do this. And then once you're in relationship, breaking up with someone was very difficult because you're, you're codependent in relationship and you just sort of blend your energy fields together. And so when you break up, it's like you're leaving pieces of yourself with the other person and they're leaving pieces of themselves with you. And, and you know, you're all like good together and, and it just feels like you, you've lost yourself when you get out, out of the relationship because you've defined yourself in the relationship. And so that was problematic as well. Um, so there's, just a, there's a lot of things about being an empath that are not so great. <laughs> and so, you know, uh, but the reason we're empaths is because it's great for monitoring our environment and making sure we're staying safe, right? right. That's what we're really doing as empaths is we're monitoring our environment. And so that was, I was particularly good at <laughs> to the point where I remember being at a festival once. God, this was like 2000s, 20 years ago. Wow. Um, and uh, one of my friends came in in tears. She was upset. She had had a fight with her boyfriend and he had gone somewhere on site. And there were 600 people at this festival and the site was like four or five acres and, and it was pouring rain. And so she came in going, do you know where he is? Did do you tell you what I was like, hold on. And I just did my empath thing. And I was like, he's at the boathouse. And now there's absolutely no reason to be at the boathouse except to be in, in getting a boat. It's basically just a garage for boats. And she was like, well, did he tell you he was going there or whatever? I'm like, no, but you asked me where he is. And that's where he is. <laughs> and, yeah. and sure enough, that's where he was. And he and the person he was talking to and the woman that had asked me the question all came up to me at different points and looked at me and went, oh my God, you're a witch. He was at the boathouse. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it was a pagan event. It was rites of spring, right? And I'm like, wait, this is rites of spring. <laughs> this is supposed to be the one place I'm supposed to be able to do that and not get that response. <laughs> I was like, duh, you know, yes, I can do this. But that's, that's why you asked me, right? <laughs> so, right. yeah. Right. So it, we've got our gifts and then we got the, the downside of it, you know, in, in a sense, uh, or the, or the challenge, I'll say. Um, everything is really a gift to me, but it's like, it's a sense of challenge. I mean, especially if you're, you don't know what's even happening or why it's happening or why you feel the way you feel. And why do I wake up in a bad mood when I have no reason to be in a bad mood or mm -hmm. all these things that we're taking on? I mean, and then that we do, we find ourselves like for me, uh, part of my thing was with the empathic stuff was, uh, was not being assertive enough in my business to make offers and let people invest to work with me. And mm -hmm. so I would just uh, do a free session, tell them they're fine. I've already transmitted great energy to them. They'll be fine. But if you want to hire me, go ahead. You know, like, <laughs> so, I mean, so that's the challenge is like just not having this, um, this crazy level of like protection and almost like I was protecting them. Like, well, I want to make sure you're safe. Don't part of your money <laughs> or something, you know, I mean, just like, don't think I'm bad or after your money and just so many, or, you know, and, I, I know you can't afford it. So I'm just going to give it to you. Right, right, right. Like the codependent thing. Yeah. 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 A lot of people have done that. I've done that. <laughs> not me on that one as much, but I just would end up not having clients, but I give them a lot up front with the intro session and things like that. So but I mean, a lot, so the people here on this show, they are looking to, they're either in business or they want to be in business and they want to really want to rock it. So they need to learn how to deal with these, these issues, right? As empaths, um, what are some of the things you've done to help people that are challenged with the sense of like, yeah, I'm very aware of my environment <laughs> and um, being able to um, open their, well, first, like just not to be able to get past the first thing of like, I feel like they're taking everything on, have to walk on eggshells or all those sorts of things. Like 
a first layer of like the boundaries and energetic boundaries, et cetera. So how do you help people with that? Well, and, and this would be a good time to say that there's a free download on my website called Boundaries for Empaths that gives you a, a, a absolute instruction on exactly how to create boundaries as an empath and what is causing the problem and how you how to fix it. So, um, and that's free. So, you know, if you go to kellysparta.com and make sure you spell my name like that, you see it in the bottom of the window there because Kelly is just with an E at the end, nothing else. Um, and... Um, so you know that that's a good starting point is to to do that process of, of being able to bring your energy field in which is really what it comes down to um a lot of people are like oh well let's shield it's like well if if everybody's inside your energy field your shields aren't going to do any good right? <laughs> you're shielding them in now <laughs> right they can't exactly. get out <laughs> and that's what the people are doing right <laughs> so but the thing that i i i find for business people is most relevant um, as an empath, as people coming. So if you're an empath, it's likely that you came out of challenged childhood in some way that you had, you know, trauma or, you know, something where you were feeling unsafe in your childhood on a regular basis, right? Not just like once, but a lot, right? And so for people who come out of that environment, one of the things that happens is that when they go to charge for their services, they will ask for validation instead of money or they will ask for validation in addition to money and when you ask for validation you don't get as much money or any money depending on how much validation you need because it's a fair exchange right and so you know this becomes a, a problem because you know, either they end up charging the full price and then asking for validation too, and then, then the client feels out of balance. Um, or they um, ask for validation and then they feel like they can't ask for money and then they don't get any money. So, um, you know, it's very important to do what you need to do in order to feel like you're competent and to be able to practice enough that you know that you've got the skills, right? So there's, there's two pieces is, am I, am I able to do this? It's what I call the prove it stage, right? It's, am I able to do this? Is it real, right? And do other people see it too, right? And so, <laughs> you know, we all remember that time, right? I, I know you remember that time. I vividly remember that time where it's just like, I'm pretty sure I can do this. And I, um, <laughs> but I don't know that I trust it. And I, can I actually let that come out of my mouth? I'm not so sure, right? We remember these, these moments. And so mm -hmm. the, the other part of it, though, also is to be able to internalize your sense of value. And that's more complicated, that that requires a little bit more work on the um, it, there's a whole bunch of things that go into that because when we put the coping mechanisms in place in our childhood they were a tapestry of coping mechanisms they just you know we wove them together right and over time the tapestry was wrapped around us and it just got tighter and tighter and now it's a straitjacket right and it was super functional in our dysfunctional childhood, but it is no longer functional now. And that is where the problem comes in because if you go and try and pull a single strand, it just sort of snags on everything else, right? And that's why it becomes challenging. So you really just have to unravel the whole thing at once, which is why I say it's complicated because it's, it's not just your sense of value. It's also your willingness to claim your space and to set your boundaries and to own your power and to love yourself, right? All of those pieces are sort of wound in together. And you were saying earlier about owning your power. That's another big thing for empaths is, you know, we've got these wonder and, and you, you hit on it right away with the warrior thing. We have these huge wells of rage, right? Because, <laughs> you know, we don't get to be ourselves and that pisses us off. <laughs> and, and we are constantly empty because we're feeding everybody else and that pisses us off. <laughs> but we shove it down and we shove it down because we're the good ones. We're going to be good. We're going to be good. We're going to be good. And then blah, what? <laughs> what could you possibly want? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you're all dead. Now you're all dead meat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's one of the big reasons people don't give themselves permission to have their power. Yeah. That is one of the big reasons because 
at heart, we are incredibly loving people. And the last thing we want is to hurt anyone. Right. And if we don't give ourselves permission to have our power, then maybe we won't do as much damage when we fly off the handle. Right. Right. That's one of the big reasons why people don't do that. So draining that well of rage, super important. Mm -hmm. Because without it, we will internally circuit breaker and just shut it down. Yeah. Because we're afraid of hurting people. Right, right, right. What are, well, yeah, I mean, that is such a good point. I mean, a lot of times people have told me, get that baseball bat, smack that pillow, or, you know, things of this nature. And I was in martial arts for a while there and everything and um, different things. Um, but what, I mean, so for me, I just, I just find that, um, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess in the, in the past, especially, I don't know so much anymore. I, I know there's always next levels for me, but I, I know in the past it would definitely be, okay, well, if I say something to upset somebody and I've triggered them even just by being myself, that's being that like, that's not acceptable. You know, like that wouldn't be acceptable. No. So screw yeah. being myself, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to hold this back. I'm going to be, Oh, <laughs> so that won't happen for you. You just think I'm such a nice guy and we can live happily ever after. And yet um, I'm, I'm not getting what I want in my life because I'm not being assertive. And then the other person on the other side, you know, you probably could, in this case, if you're a healer or a coach or whatever, which a lot of the listeners are, you know, I could actually, if I was being assertive, which I was in the beginning of the practice, I could actually help you by just saying, hey, listen, that's not true. And, you know, say what I need to say and <laughs> not worrying about it. And then, oh, you're triggered. You're upset. Wow. That's okay. Good. The things are moving. Like, <laughs> good. Seeing it in another way rather than being so protective because the protection is like the protection we felt like we always needed, right? right. Somebody, we're so sensitive and somebody said something to us that like, uh, well, you're just, you know, you're kind of silly. Ah, you're calling me silly. You know, like some of us are that sensitive. <laughs> so we were, we were just, we were like, we want to be so gentle other people because we know how traumatic that even the smallest thing sometimes could be. Yeah. Um, much less all the trauma. Some, some empaths really have gone through really deep trauma for sure. So, so it's a really tricky thing, like you said. And but yeah, with uh, well, there's the there's one more piece in that scenario that you, you that also needs to be said, which is um, when you don't speak your truth, you stop relating to the other person and you've killed the relationship. Yeah. And you just yeah. don't know it's dead. Right. OK, that that's the other piece of the puzzle is when we fail to speak our truths, we fail to be in relationship. And so oftentimes I hear people say, oh, well, I can't say that. You know, I, I, I've got to save the relationship. It's like, look, if you don't say it, you've killed the relationship. <laughs> you know, it's just a zombie and you don't know it, right? You're, you're a walking zombie relationship. That's right. Your zombie oh, relationship. I, I think you're just fine and I'm fine. Everyone's fine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and zombie walking. Yes. Right. And we're just like these miserable straight jackets. <laughs> Who knows how long we can laugh now, but it's it's serious. I mean, yeah. it really is serious, but we're laughing because we we've been there and uh, in our own ways. So, um, but yeah, I mean, so that, that's one one of the people I work with. She talks about being a badass empath. <laughs> Got to bring that that sense of that badass in. And for me, I, a lot of times again, it's just been simply being even assertive. It was uh, that was an issue. So. Um, but anyway, so Kelly, how can people really, um, I feel like this is the key when we're talking about empaths learning to receive is this is a big key to it, right? I mean, yeah. what are all the keys that allow empaths to open up to their power and start really receiving who they are, right? That allows them to experience um, receiving more of who they are and all the blessings that come from that. Well, receiving in general is a sticky wicket for for most empaths. And that's because um, <clears throat> oftentimes the, the ultimate receiving is love, right? That's, that's what we're, we start with is unconditional love. And we, since we didn't get unconditional love, we got conditional love. We, we start to, to, to look at receiving as not entirely worth it because 
love comes with obligations, right? It's like, I'll give you this much love if you give me that much love, or I, I love you, therefore you owe me this. And so we, we often just go, hmm, I don't want the obligation, not accepting the love. And we shut down, right? And the, when you shut down your ability to receive love, you also shut down oftentimes, most of the time, your ability to receive energy. And when you shut that down, you, when you're shed, you're going into what I call the energetic fetal position. It's the, uh, the, the closing of the crown and the root chakras. And that's where energy vampires come from is you, you have no access to energy outside of yourself. So you end up either uh, screwing up your aura by trying to absorb energy through your aura, which will cause neurological problems uh, because the, the nodes in the aura are related to the neurons in the brain. So um <clears throat> that will cause problems down the road but either you do that or you end up sucking energy from the people around you because you have no other power source and so if you're finding that you're exhausted all the time and you have to just go home and be still and do nothing for a long time you're probably in the energetic fetal position and so you know there's a tree meditation on my youtube site that will help you to open that back up again. You got to do it multiple times a day for months in order to, to get your body to reset to the open position again, because it's used to being closed all the time, but it's totally worth it because holy crap, the difference in energy is amazing, right? Um, the, the not receiving piece, once you've stopped receiving love and energy, now you're also not willing to receive messages from your guides and intuition and 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 money and you know support and respect and help right there's there's you just are like mm -hmm, i got it all me i'm doing it myself i don't need anybody else because i can't rely on them um, or i don't want to owe anybody anything right and that becomes one, a very lonely existence and two, uh, a really challenging one. And, you know, I, I think you're nodding at me and I, I know I experienced it and I'm sure other people out there have experienced this as well and, and to, to a variety of different degrees. But that's really what it comes down to is it's, you have to look at all the ways in your life that you say no to receiving. And that's from the smallest little thing of a compliment. Oh, look, you look fantastic. Thanks, you look great too. Here, let me hot, hot potato that back. You know, love your shirt, love your dress. <laughs> Get it out of here. Or, you know, love your shirt. Oh, this old thing, I spent nothing on it. <laughs> you know, just throw it on the floor, right? Any way to get rid of it. So if you can't even accept a compliment, it's very good chance that you're not accepting anything else. And, you know, we're taught very early in life and, and in religion in particular, that it's better to give than to receive, which is the most ridiculous statement I have ever heard in my entire life because it is a binary system. If no one is willing to receive, no one can give. If no one gives, no one can receive. Therefore, how can one possibly be better than the other? <laughs> It's just, it is politics playing into the religious process saying, give us your tithes, right? Exactly. You know? <laughs> the reward will come in heaven. Exactly, <laughs> right? You know? and, and it's just like, no. Dinner, yeah, give us. <laughs> it's just crazy, the programming we've taken on. Oh my and, gosh. So, you know, yeah. you know uh, this is the piece. And so you have to really be willing to receive. Right. And, and if you have a moment of going, Oh, but you know, blah, 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 because we, we also have this thing that says, if I do something for you, it's a 50 cent deposit in our mutual bank account. And if I ask for something from you, it's a $50,000 withdrawal. <laughs> right? so, so we don't want to ask I'm back for the rest of my life. Now. Exactly. Exactly. Because what we do isn't as valuable as what other people do because of how we see ourselves. This is one of the ways in which we have this sort of skewed perspective. Right. Mm -hmm. And so 
Um, but if you ever have a hard time receiving, the easy way to think about it is to say, okay, ha think back to a moment where you tried to give somebody something and they refused to receive it. And remember how bad that felt. Yeah. You know, how, how unreceived you felt and how sad you felt that you had this wonderful gift to give and they wouldn't receive it. Okay. And you're that person now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so stop being that person. Right. <laughs> Just say thank you and be truly grateful for it. Right. I, I practice my gratitude and, and it's not as easy right now because of COVID, but um, my favorite place to practice gratitude is when someone holds a door open for me um, and, and to practice my receiving and my gratitude is to be like, thank you. <laughs> right. And I'm like, Ooh. And, and I'm truly grateful. And you can feel that. I can tell just by the look on your face. You can feel it. And I, that's how I am. I'm like, thank you. Right? You made space for me. You held the door for me. You, you took me into consideration. Thank you. Right? And to really take that in. One of the first assignments I give my students is to go out into the world and to receive love from strangers. Now, by that, I don't mean go have casual sex. But <laughs> what I'm saying is, to receive the love that, that strangers are giving you just by opening the door for you or making space for you on the sidewalk by stepping out of the way or letting you out in traffic or you know, smiling as they pass you or saying a kind word or whatever. But with strangers, it's so much easier because there's no chance that they're gonna think you owe them, right? And so we are more willing to accept it from the random stranger than we are often from the people we know in our lives because of the dynamic of, you know, the, the conditional love that was happening in childhood, right? Mm -hmm. And that alone shows you that love comes from many places, mm -hmm. right? And, and uh, oddly enough, it's easier to receive it from stranger people, you know, strangers that, who are people rather than from spirit. Um, and you know, part of that is because we have this sort of mindset around spirit being mommy and daddy, right? There, and so they, the spirit gets projected on with all the mommy and daddy issues sometimes. So, you know, some people can get past that, but some some people really can't. So, it's it's often just easier to start with a random stranger on the street. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, people are all different levels. You know, they're yeah. listening. Some some of this may resonate for people, and some of it may not. I mean, it, wherever they may be right now, and who they are too, because I do feel, you know, it's kind of a big category and paths. Oh, yeah. So everybody's a little bit different in, in what they've experienced. Um, you know, it's funny. I mean, I think empaths on the bright side. I think empaths can have extraordinarily high self-esteem once they get on a roll. I mean, and then in my crash, like that's kind of how I am. That's why I bring it up. Like I will be perceived, like I keep thinking about my kids. They're like, you have extreme self-confidence and self-esteem, right? And then they'll see me get upset about something um, around my performance doing something. And they'll be like, wow, you know, you're being pretty hard on yourself. <laughs> and so like, uh, we tend to go to, I, I don't know if that, have you seen that? I mean, I haven't yeah. really just thought about like, that's true for me. I hadn't ever thought about that in other empathic type of souls. Like, do you see a lot of that then? I do. Um, and, and I actually delineate those differently. Um, but the the self-esteem high self-esteem is i am comp confident in my ability to be competent right mm -hmm. and that's a high self-esteem whereas self-love is i am confident that i am valuable and lovable even when i'm doing nothing right right um and you know what you were talking about is is somewhat related to that but but more often it's just that we are really harsh on ourselves. Yeah. We've, we've internalized that, that dialogue from our childhood, but it's not just from our childhood, it's from, from culture. I mean, in American culture, the average child receives 437 negative messages to five positive messages per day. And that alone is sufficient to make people a little nuts, right? 
And, and, you know, it was one of those things I remember Pema Chodron in her uh, Getting Unstuck program talked about uh, what she, she said that she talked about, I think it was um, Trimpa Rinpoche was coming to the U.S. for the first time. And he was, he, he had to be told that Americans assumed that they were inherently evil. And which is not true for Tibetans. They assume that they're inherently good. And he just couldn't wrap his head around the idea that someone would assume that they were inherently evil <laughs> and that they had to overcome their baser nature, you know? And he, he was just like, what, what? And, and, and it's definitely, it definitely matters where you're from as to whether or not some of these things are true for you, right? But, um, American culture, yeah, we we are we are really hard on ourselves. <laughs> That's one of the things that we have to do as part of the process is accept the idea that we're human, that we don't have to be superhuman, that we can be just human and flawed and and not perfect, and you know to to be able to just mess up, be like, yep, everybody messes up, okay, right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because I, I I know that's like a bug that's been in me, you know, for so long. I mean, definitely there's all different, you know, weathers for my energy, right? I'm like, oh, everything's perfect. There's nothing to be addressed or done. Everything's flowing. But there's also a crazed part of my, you know, within my being. It's like, man, there's probably a million more things we should do. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, less so in me these days, but like, I mean, I, maybe I'm speaking more so for others, but like, I do have some of that, I, absolutely. But for some, it's like, cause it's like, you can be more, you can do more, you can have more, more. <laughs> like in every moment you're like, what more should I do? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that, I remember. Never enough. Never yeah. enough. I, I, I probably should be a hundred more things right now. How can I do it? I'll never get there. <laughs> cause yeah. I mean, thing is part of it is like as a smidge of uh, like a dot of wisdom in it and that we realize more is possible <laughs> right. but we made it to we have to be more we need to do more and you're you're blowing it is kind of like the translation and i do you're right i mean the the uh, uh internal critic or whatever is very strong inside of me at times i mean very very strong and I remember like so many times, like I was in grad school, I remember saying things about my projects. And so I said, I did horrible. I was talking to a whole group, and my professor, this was horrible. I did the worst performance ever. It was like, they're like, whoa. And it was this psychology, uh, my master's degree. So I was like, whoa, 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 you're being a little harsh on yourself there. Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know, and I was like, I was, I was kind of like, wow, I am. Oh, I didn't even realize it. Uh, so I didn't even wasn't completely even aware yet. So yeah. sometimes I think we're really hard on ourselves so habitually, and we might not even realize that. Yeah. We're doing that to well, and and the compulsion to do is mm -hmm. so high, right? Mm -hmm. I remember going on walkabout. Now, when I was on walkabout, I was literally taking a year off. I was not working. I didn't have anything I had to do. I was just off. It took me a month before I would stop hopping up off the couch and going, I'm supposed to be doing something. <laughs> and then realizing there's nothing to do. Really? What am I supposed to do then? <laughs> a month before I stopped doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, coming back into the work environment, I was, I was crushed by the, the, you know, the overflow of things to do. When I came back, I was like, ah, you know, it, it, it overwhelmed me to the point where I literally, my hands refused to, to grip. My tendonitis got so bad that I could not pull laundry, wet laundry out of the washer because I, I just couldn't get a grip on my life because there was so much going on. And I was like, ah. I can't do this anymore <laughs> because it was at that high pain because I, that was the only way I knew how to do work. Right. Because that's how I'd always done it. And so when I stepped back in, I stepped back in that way. I was like, mm, this is unsustainable. <laughs> I was like, I, I'm insane. What is wrong with me? 
Um, but you know, it wasn't until I got to that point where I was like, okay, we're just going to back up <laughs> that, that I had to figure it out. You know, I had to figure out how to do it differently. You know, most people, most of us in that state are working out of what I call emergency do it mode. That's the mode you go into when life is it, when, when the, the shit's hitting the fan, right? It's just like, bang, you know, you're like, gotta do it. Okay. Bang, 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 bang. That's yep. the emergency do it mode. The fortunate thing is, is that becomes the, the normal pattern for people that, um, that are the, you know, the people that, that do that. I mean, you know, empaths or not, but like a lot, yeah, a lot of our empaths can totally relate to this right now. And that leaves no, you know, as long as you're on things that that leave no breath for you to receive more of just, you know, uh, of just being and, and of allowing thing grace to happen in your life. I mean, just to let the bold and um, to let that, that, that's like a foreign concept to a lot of people. Like this idea of like things just happen. Really? I don't believe that. I'll never forget like a retreat I was at and I was talking to somebody about that. They're, they're such doers. They're just like, I don't believe in all that BS looking at your crystals and things are going to happen. <laughs> now I see her on Facebook. Now she's talking about exactly those things. It's like, it takes a little while for us to really understand that it's really true. We can we can be safe to just let things be and to receive, but there's a path to go through because we got all the gunk inside of ourselves that keeps us from doing that from our history as um, as be, uh, human beings and empaths in this case. So um, I know we I know we only have so much time left. So uh, and there's one other tip that I want to give, which is um, reverse your priority list. That's the very first thing to do is reverse your priority list. Um, put yourself at the top instead of the bottom right. right and if you can start there that will make a huge difference in your life and it's that whole you know put your oxygen mask on before helping others right it's the same concept you give from your overflow instead of from your emptiness right and so that's that's the 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 really step one tip that i would give for for helping people to learn how to receive better right because even if you're accomplishing a lot and making a lot of money, let's say we've got some people listening that are in that place, but they're constantly doing, don't think you're an accomplishment and money that you're really truly deeply receiving. You're, you're not really. You're continuing to try to prove to yourself that you're not unworthy, that you're not unlovable, and you still don't believe it. So you haven't really received yet. I think that's an important thing for people to hear right now. It's like, you know the kind of receiving we're talking about here the deep one you know the deep receiving and everything else following from that place so yeah and i'm i'm actually hearing people going but i have responsibilities <laughs> right i'm hearing that they're like but no i can't i can't i can't i have responsibilities i have people to take care of there are people depending on me mm -hmm. and it's like yes and they will still be there an hour from now when you've done your meditation <laughs> You know, yeah. it's, it's okay. You know, that just because you have responsibility, I have responsibilities too. Dan has responsibilities too. We all have responsibilities. And that doesn't mean that we don't get time for ourselves. Right, right. And it's totally foundational uh, for, for my life. And I'm sure for you too, Kel Kelly, is to do that. And then what's really true is you, you are, you're more effective and you're more, you're in a place where you can more effectively help people in the ways that they really need to be helped. Not all this emergency crisis energy, you know, that, that's the stuff. That's a big one to clear for the empaths to everything. Oh my God, it's a crisis. <laughs> Get out of crisis zone and start uh, watching how grace really does take care of everybody. So um, Kelly, yeah, I know you um, gave a last tip, but any last any last words? Uh, and then we want to share your uh, about your gift again, but any last uh you know, words or things you want to share before we wrap up today? Um, yeah, be kind to yourself. You know, there's a way in which we, we treat everyone else so much better than we treat ourselves. And so ask yourself if the voice that's running in your head, if it was being said out loud to you, would you punch the first person in the face? Then don't let it talk to you. Okay. It, it's, we, we want to be as kind to ourselves. We want to think to ourselves the same way we would think and speak to a beloved person in our life. 
And so, you know, be kind to yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I just want to, you know, speak about Kelly for a moment here and just say, I mean, uh, Kelly is one of the more knowledgeable, one of the most, or more knowledgeable, most knowledgeable people around um, energy and just her understanding of energy and how, what makes people tick, you know, through just who she is, I would say primarily. Uh, that's always the big one. And uh, through all our studies, through just, just for decades and decades and decades of, of spiritual and personal development, she knows so many things. And she's really magical with doing energy work too. So, um, so definitely take advantage of whatever you can from, from Kelly. And Kelly, tell us again about the free gift that you have to offer them. So it's called Boundaries for Empaths. And it specifically just teaches you how to create better boundaries for yourself. Um, in, and that's available on my website at kellysparta.com. And it's, it's in the top right corner of the website. It's hard to miss. And um, the, the other thing I would suggest is that if you're, you're into the magical and the energetic, you might want to check out my podcast at spiritsherpapodcast.com, or it's just Spirit Sherpa if you're searching on any of your podcast platforms. Um, I do a weekly podcast with all kinds of stuff about energy and Dan's actually been on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely put a link or we'll get it on our blog post here. Okay. Yeah, right. Great. Yeah. So yeah, um, it, there is so much that we as empaths can do in the world. We, we are brought on this planet at this time because we are part of the big machine of the transition right and so if you are feeling overwhelmed at being called to your purpose right now which a lot of people are people are having their awakenings and they're going oh my god i'm late and i'm not up to this i i i want to be but i'm just not just remember that you don't have to do it all by yourself you are probably just a cog in the machine and and that's okay and you are exactly on time no one is late, okay? <laughs> I don't care how bad you feel. I don't care how much you think you are. Nobody is late. You are exactly on time and, and give yourself a break there too. And just do your, do your best, move forward and you will get there. And, and you don't have to be the person who's gonna be the one doing it yet. Your journey will bring you there. Yes, that's very beautifully said, Kelly. Very, very wonderful. I really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. You're exactly where you're meant to be and you're fully receiving all the blessings you actually really need at this moment and it's full and it only expands the more you can relax and just learn how to receive more and Kelly will help you with that. So go to kellysparta.com and take advantage of um, everything she has to offer. So uh, with all that being said, um, Kelly, I just want to thank you again for coming on. Everybody listen in. Keep on tuning in, and we'll keep on rocking here on Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Till next time, everybody. Bye. Thanks for listening to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Stay tuned for our next upcoming new episodes each Wednesday and Saturday. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to help us to serve you best. As a reminder, you can get your free Meditate and Make Money meditation at www yoursacredpurpose.com to rock your sacred purpose. Goodbye for now, everybody.